Today, let's look at this word ego. We hear this word so often. What does this word ego mean? Ego is a Latin word which means I. So, ego actually means I. Which I? Now, that is the question. Ego is the personal opinion of the self that I make. So, there is a truth to me. There is already a truth to me. Even before I entered this world, there was a truth to me. But right from the mother's womb, information starts coming in. And all that information is stored within this individual right from the mother's womb right till the moment of death all the feelings that it will keep on accumulating about itself about the world about this about that about success about what is right about what is wrong about what the attitude towards this should be, what the attitude towards that should be, about health, about wellness, about money, about everything. There will be a collection of feelings about all these things. And each feeling can give rise to a thousand thoughts. So now, this individual who comes to this world begins to look at himself or herself not from that place of truth, but he begins to look at himself or herself as others look at him or her. So, if our primary caregivers, let us say the parents, they look at you as something very positive, you end up being that successful person. But there may be some areas of life where they looked at you differently. So, there are dents in the personality which will show up. So, based on how others look at us, we start looking at ourselves that way. We form an opinion about ourselves and what we can do and what we cannot do, what we can have, what we cannot have, what we can be, what we cannot be, based on how these people looked at us. Our earliest teachers in school, our parents at home, our grandparents at home, our relatives, our neighbors, everything that they said that has gone in, everything that you saw as a child has made a deep impression on you. So now, based on that entire collection of everything that you have received through your senses and through your mind, you start looking at yourself in a particular way. So now, as against that self, which came here as, let us say, the divine spark. Okay, that God self. As against that, you have created another self, which is a false self which you have created.
you have created you are the only one who can destroy it even god cannot destroy it you have created it and you are the only agency which can destroy it it's your responsibility you created you have to destroy now this ego is only a false collection of opinions about itself these are not things which are true these are things which have been seen and heard and registered and accepted all the labels that other people chose to give everything that has been accepted and it's all hung around the neck and the and the individual is walking through life with all those labels which he did not choose but he has done nothing about learning how to throw them away so he continues to walk through life with all of those labels and he doesn't even know what labels he is carrying so the ego is the first thing which has to say yes to change that's the most difficult part the ego will not allow what is the ego now it's a collection of all these thoughts and ideas and beliefs and everything lots of self judgment the ego is that part of the mind which tries to protect that individual when this individual was very very small maybe in the mother's womb maybe later on and it has continued all through life the ego is a protector it will continue through life it will stand as a guard it will not allow you to receive the right information about yourself it will stand as that guard and it will you know keep on deflecting things so whatever is important for you whatever is important for you in order to make the change this will not allow why this will not allow because there is a comfort zone and you have lived in that comfort zone for a very very long time today you are saying i want to make a change this one will say nothing doing and so you will try to make that change and something outside will happen and it will be so big that you will decide no 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 i'm not doing all this i'll sit back so this is how things happen something unexpected will happen outside something that you didn't plan some somehow something has happened and the next thing you know is that you decide that no no it's all right however it is let it continue so the ego is basically that agency in you which has to make the first movement the ego has to be convinced that change is necessary you can keep on suffering you can keep on looking at your life situation you can keep on crying you can keep on downloading all your negativity on whoever chooses to listen to you now the ego is the agency which has to move so what does it need to do actually what it needs to do is to get used to the idea that a change is required once it gets used to the idea that change is required it will slowly start allowing you to make that change you know why is it so difficult to break a habit we are talking about why the ego doesn't allow change now now let's look at the whole process of change your heart pumps blood and that blood goes you know it travels and it goes up to the brain along with the blood there are messenger molecules called neuropeptides they are messenger molecules and they 
टेक मैसेजेस ऑफ फीलिंग्स दैट इज कैरिड अप टू द ब्रेन नाउ ऑन अ डेली बेसिस द हार्ट पंप्स ब्लड and the blood goes to the brain along with those neuropeptides you may feel happy for a few minutes you may feel cheerful for a few minutes you may feel this you may feel that but the emotional thermostat is set at a particular you know degree so you will do that and then you'll come back to wherever you were wherever you are habitually so now the brain is used to receiving a particular kind of neuropeptide on a habitual basis it receives that neuropeptide on a habitual basis and you it may receive plenty of neuropeptides but there will be one dominant kind and the brain will renew its cells based on that habitual neuropeptide that it is receiving which means that habitual feeling those neuropeptides are the ones with which the brain will you know renew its cells it has got used to it now one day you decide i'm going to change and so you try to change you know new year resolutions i'm going to do this three days you'll do four day the game is over why because why did you stop it you will never come to know why you stop stopped doing that but the reason is you're actually feeling bad inside and you're not even conscious of it you just drop that habit why because the brain is going to demand those neuropeptides that you have habitually been sending up to it you can't stop it now you have to fulfill that demand and so the brain has all its ways of forcing you to give them you will be forced to do it you'll get a phone call from somewhere you think everything is happening from outside you get a phone call you get some bad news you get this you get the thing is that as long as we think everything is happening from outside from outside you'll remain stuck so now immediately you go back to that bad feeling the brain has got its you know dose it wanted those neuropeptides you have started giving it enough things will come back to normal and you'll stay in that stuck place this is the reason why drunkards it's not as if drunkards don't know that they are messing up their families they are messing up the family finances don't they know they know everything they want to change and they are not able to change why are they not able to change because the demand of the brain for its neuropeptide is so strong that this person dare not stop giving it so even though that drunkard or that alcoholic or somebody wants to change he or she is not able to change because he doesn't know how to break that cycle and so he'll go back after two days he'll promise and he'll do this and he'll do that and third day he'll be back at his game so these are the reasons why it becomes difficult to break a habit cycle 